Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how you can set up your grains simulations so that you get a really good distribution of particles, which will simulate really well with our granular solver within NX Fluids. But also, I'm going to show you how we can get that and ensure that we don't have that really kind of rigid hexagonal grid pattern in our particles. So, let's begin. In our scene, we have our Insidium Fox object, and if we make that object invisible, you'll see that we're emitting particles from within the volume. Let's go to the Emitter Object tab. We're in Object Emitter mode, dragged in the Insidium Fox, and then in the Emission tab, we are set to Shot Hexagonal, which shoots out a hexagonal um, grid of particles on the first frame. It works out how many particles it can fit in that grid by looking at the particle radius. We've got it set to four centimeters. So this looks fine. We've also got a gravity and an NX fluids in the scene. In the fluids, we have got it set to SPH granular. So if we hit play, we get this nice granular solve and the sand crumbles. Very good. So you might think, well, that's it. Perfect. Here's the problem. We have used our hexagonal grid in the emitter because it's a perfect emission mode for granular sims, for a stable, um, a stable structure. The problem is if we hit render, that hexagonal grid is really obvious, especially in the beauty. Now, it may be slightly less obvious with much higher particle count detailed sims, but you're still going to see these kind of repetitive patterns, and that's not great. So what do we do? Well, we've got a few controls in the emitter to sort this out. In our emission tab, we have got our jitter controls, which will do just that. It will jitter the X and Y and the Z position of those particles to break up this grid. So look, let's put our jitter on maybe three and three. And you can see that that's changed our particle distribution here. Let's hit render. And yeah, look, so that has obviously broken up that grid. So you may think, well, that's it. We've cracked it. We're done. Here's the problem. If we now simulate this, we're going to not get that smooth granular solve. We're going to get an explosion. Why? Well, it's because our particles have now been jittered, been moved. And so they are now, some of them, in an intersecting state with other particles. And if you have intersecting particles um, at the start of a fluid sim, that causes a very high fluid density state. That causes this big pressure situation, which caused this, this blast, this explosion of particles. And we don't want that. So what do we do? Well, here is the workflow. What we're going to do is, let's just switch off our gravity and fluids. We're going to use an NX push modifier to push these intersecting particles away from each other. So let's go to Insidium X Particles Nexus and bring in an NX push. In the push, we're going to set it to particle radius mode. We're going to put the strength on 100. And we're going to, we need we want this just to happen in one frame to do it in one frame. So to do that, we need lots of iterations for it to do it over and over again. This calculation to make sure everything gets pushed apart. And the higher the particle count, the more iterations you're going to need. I'm going to guess that 200 iterations for this is going to be OK in one frame. So let's go forward one frame. So this calculation happens. And if you look carefully at the viewport, you'll see them change slightly. So for the frame, yeah, they have changed. That's pushed them apart. Um, so now if we switch off the push, activate the gravity in the fluids. If we had enough iterations in our push, this should simulate as a fluid sim with no explosions. So let's hit play. Yes, we have got that. So that's working perfectly. They crumble to the floor. But the advantage with this over the first one is if we hit render, we have broken up that regular grid. Brilliant. So let's just do this with more particles now. So I'm going to switch off the gravity in the fluids again and activate the push. We're going to go to the emitter emission tab and we're going to set the radius to two centimeters. So way more particles in the scene. We don't need quite as much jitter now because these are smaller particles. Let's put this on maybe 2.2 and 2.2. But we do need more push iterations because we have so many more particles in the scene. I'm going to guess at maybe 1,500. So we're going to go forward one frame. 
And again, this is going to take a lot longer now because it's got to calculate so many more particles and more iterations, but that's done now. If we hit render, you're going to see we're going to have a much nice kind of finer look. Yeah, that's looking way better. Still not kind of production quantity of particles, but that's looking really nice. And we've got that nice representation of our model without that regular grid. That's looking really cool. Let's hit pause. And if we've got enough iterations, if we deactivate the push activate our other modifiers and hit play we should get our fluid sim starting to simulate yet yeah, without exploding now it's obviously taking a lot longer way more particles but we've got that good starting point so we can start making tweaks to our fluid sim now to get the look that we want but here is something that we can do so we don't have to keep doing this activating and deactivating of our modifiers so let's just switch off the simulation ones put the push back on go back to the first frame we'll go forward a frame so it calculates that push and then once it has done that we are then going to save this as the starting state of our particles and the way we do that is go to emitter object tab we go to this initial state tab we set state which saves this um, position and color of, of the particles now, we don't want to emit any more particles now that we've saved this initial state. So we could go to the emission tab and change the emission mode to controlled only. So it won't emit any more particles. It'll just load in this from this initial state. Brilliant. So if I go back to the first frame now, it'll just keep them as that as their initial state. Excellent. I can switch off the push. We could delete the push now. It's done its job. Activate our fluids. And now we're ready to start making tweaks to our fluids and the particles will always be born in this perfect non-intersecting state. And if we hit render, um, we can see that we're getting uh, a much nicer um, distribution of those particles within the volume that doesn't have that really regular looking grid effect on the particles, which means obviously our final render is going to look way better.